And th this is what I wanted to steer back to. Really? Yes, okay. I, wanted to steer, I wanted to steer back towards the, what we talked about with comfort. It is shown, and this is legitimate, those who transition and are treated as the gender that they identify as mentally improve unbelievably, and it is absolutely yeah, true. So I hate to break it to you. They're more likely to commit suicide. There's a huge community <laughs> called Transition Regret. I encourage you to look at it. It has 27,000 members on Facebook of people who make the chemical castration decision to transition, and that's an irreversible decision. It's a growing group of people that say, I was sold a complete bill of goods here. And so, you know, that, that really is the question, which is, if it's, if it's irreversible, and you're citing some study that, honestly, the data shows exactly the opposite, is that they're more likely to commit suicide, more likely for self-harm, all these sorts of things. What is the proper way to treat it? As I said, the study has not been disproven. The reason that the suicide rate is so high is because they are bullied for who they are. See, I is, have seen it this is in school, and this is a truth. And you know why I know it's nonsense? Because every single person in this room disagrees with you fundamentally and is treating you incredibly respectfully tonight. That is a pile of, of garbage. I know it's a pile of garbage. Of course. And so instead, and I'll be honest, it's the people that are in those positions that end up becoming the bullies themselves that kick me off of Twitter. That's, and no offense, but kind of your team is the one that's super like offended that I used a name that Levine used to have. Like who's the bully in this situation? Well, it, it's disrespectful to do that because she identifies as a woman. Was and it, it is just disrespect. Levine's that name? is why we, some, I can't speak for everyone else. I can only speak for myself at the end of the day, right? And I, it's just disrespectful, and it is not right to call Leah Thomas her dead name well, out of respect for L her. L Levine or whatever, but, so, but l let me, let me oh, zero sorry. in on this, right? So it's a birth name, whatever you could call it a dead name, it's fine. But if I were to do a biography on Thomas, and I would include that name, how is that disrespectful? Isn't that, like, let's take your argument at face value. Wouldn't that be a journey of transition, a courageous movement towards who you really are? Like an uplifting kind of sort of story and saga from the man I used to be and the woman I am now? How's that disrespectful? Oh, well, in that context, then, for, uh, probably. I oh, mean... so dead naming's now okay. I mean, maybe my tweet was all about the courageous journey of Ricardo Levine that once was named Richard and now name is Rachel. Do you see what's getting here is that you're putting a lot of preference on context and on how I identify and all of this. And your opinions, you can have your opinions. But what we're talking about tonight is how we structure society, right? And that is a totally different thing than your opinion. So when we start to structure society on a vast minority opinion, and we start to use power and force around that vast minority of an opinion, all of a sudden, the, the only way you can win that argument is the person who wins the oppression Olympics is the person who says, I'm the most victimized, therefore I get to create the rules because I'm not comfortable. And here's something that you might not want to hear, is that if you have liberty, by definition, you're not going to be comfortable. You cannot have liberty and comfort. They're, they are, you can't have them together. Instead, you know what? And I think deep down you have this in you. You can get stronger. And I want you to get stronger. Instead of you trying to remove everything that offends you in the world, I want you to dig deeper and be tougher than the people around you. That's what we believe. Final thought. Final thought. Yeah. Oh, final thought. Um, sorry. Um, I'm trying to think of a final thought. At the end of the day, like, I, no hate towards you. I respect your opinion, of course. Like, I'm not here to, you know, cause a fight or a, an intense argument. I'm just saying I, I disagree. I yeah. And there is no oppression Olympics. All that, you know, we want is simply just recognition and respect. That's really it. Well, look, um, here's the thing, is that that's, that's what you want. And individually, I think I've given that to you. But here's where I draw the line. I'm not going to restructure society on something I know that's not true. I'm not going to turn my back on 50% of the population for something that's not true. And I'm certainly not going to call somebody a pronoun that I know that isn't true in front of me. So I believe your soul totally demands respect. Absolutely. 100%.
But as soon as you then start to get into society and civilization and restructure everything around your feelings, then all of a sudden it's whoever has the loudest voice and who's willing to use power. And that's where we as conservatives draw the line. I want to thank you for being here tonight, truly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.